And for more on the rising tensions in the Middle East, Mark Dubowitz, CEO of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, joins us now. And you heard uh, great reporting there, Mike Tobin talking about all things. And I want to turn your attention here first, Mark, to Rafa, right here on the southernmost border, obviously, with Egypt. Egypt, by reports now, is starting to put their military up there, worried about Palestinian refugees pouring in by great numbers there. What do you make of the situation? Yeah, well, first, Egyptian President Sisi wants no Palestinians in his country because he's concerned about Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood and the threats. Second is that the Israelis have done a remarkable job here in the north and in the center. I mean, they've basically taken off the battlefield, killed, arrested, or severely wounded two-thirds of Hamas fighters and 75% of uh, Hamas battalions. Here in Rafah, there are four battalions left, including senior Hamas terrorist leadership. The Israelis need to go in. They need to clear up Rafah. But they're doing something that really few militaries do, which is providing a civilian corridor to get uh, a million Palestinians out of Rafah and back into the north. Back into the north. And you think if you were advising uh, the IDF, you say it's important to go into Rafah. If they don't go back into Rafah, Hamas will win. Uh, because here on the Rafah border with Egypt is where Hamas gets its uh, resupply. This is where the rockets and the missiles and the weapons from Iran are coming in here. The Egyptians have done a really lousy job in enforcing that uh, border. And through these tunnels in Rafah into Gaza is where Hamas gets its resupply. Hamas will win unless the IDF can come in here and take care of these final battalions and secure the border. Well, and, you know, Mark, I want to take you now just to a different map because you're talking about missiles and strikes, 168 attacks on U.S. forces since October 17th. What do you make of it? It just doesn't seem to stop. It's almost as if uh, Iran is not getting a message. Well, Iran is not getting the message, and the problem is, is because the United States, by administration, is playing into Iran's proxy strategy. So essentially, the Iranians are able to strike at us, you know, 168 attacks after October 17th. By the way, 90 attacks before that under the Biden administration. And the Biden administration is playing whack-a-mole with the Iranian proxies. So instead of striking here, 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 here against these proxies, what they need to do is hit the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, who are the stormtroopers of the regime. That sends a message to the regime, you kill Americans, we're coming after you directly. That's interesting. Now, you talk about who is taken out, and I just want to go just to this next map, uh, because we did see here in Baghdad on Wednesday, the U.S. Uh, using a drone hit in a car uh, in, in the city of Baghdad, a top commander, uh, al-Bakar al-Sadi, who is the leader, the military commander of Qatab Hezbollah, who is one of the top, if not the top, Iranian proxy that's been targeting our guys. Is that going to change things? Well, look, a, a good strike, a good idea, you know, a, a deadly terrorist, and, and always worth taking these guys off the battlefield. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a proxy, and Iran's supreme leader is willing to fight fight Americans uh, to the last dead, Iraqi, Yemeni, Lebanese, Syrian. Do what President Biden uh, is, is, not, is doing, uh, is going after proxies. President Trump not only hit top commanders of Qatar, Hezbollah, but he hit Qasem Soleimani, who was the uh, commander sure. of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quds Force, exactly. Took him off, and for 11 yeah. months before Biden was elected, the Iranians just stopped. I, I want to take you to Iran, but lastly, one quick short question. Are there IRGC targets that are in this neighborhood to hit, or is it just in Iran that you need to strike? Well, there certainly were. The problem is the Biden administration has been telegraphing its punches, so leaking the media, letting them know that they're going to come in and, and strike here and in, and in uh, Syria. And uh, these guys got out of Dodge, so they left, and we don't know how many high-value IRGC so targets are left. Here. Maybe they're, this is the area where the strikes are. back in there. Okay. And lastly, before we run out of time here, I do want to take you to the news. Obviously, President Zelensky, his top commander, is now replaced. But if you look at really the battlefront, the Eastern Donbass, it, it hasn't moved. It's a stalemate, it seems. Mark, what do you make of the situation? No, that's exactly why President Zelensky uh, got rid of his top military commander, because last year the southern offensive uh, it just froze. I mean, it ran into, into the Russian military, and it froze. I, I would say this. I mean, I think we have an opportunity, we, the United States, to resupply the Ukrainians, give them what they need, and uh, impose severe costs against our second most dangerous enemy. I mean, our most dangerous enemy, China, then Russia, then Iran. The Ukrainians are fighting against the Russians. The Israelis are fighting against the Iranians. We need to provide them with what they need 
to uh, to finish the job. And just in the last seconds, I want to put you in the political spot. Obviously, they're debating in the Senate this aid to Ukraine. Important, not significant to the bigger picture. Look, it's critical. I mean, you know, we, we don't want to be out there fighting. We want to, don't want to send our men and women to die uh, fighting in defense of Ukraine or Israel. But we got to resupply them. And I think the, the influential Democrats are trying to cut supply to Israel. And influential Republicans, unfortunately, and, and mm -hmm. part of the party are trying to cut resupply to Ukraine. Yep. Uh, what are we going to do? What is the message we're sending to Xi in China that we do not defend our allies and we are no longer the arsenal of democracy? Mark Dubowitz, Foundations for Defense of Democracies. As always, thank you, sir. Great thank insight you, sir. indeed. That's what it looks like from here, Aisha.